In this video, we're going to do the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosine. So here, uh, d dx of inverse cosh of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, so uh, it's a lot like the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine, except this uh, plus 1 now is now a minus 1. Uh, so for the inverse hyperbolic cosine, the derivative is going to have the minus 1 in here now. Um, and also, we have this restriction that x is bigger than or equal to 1. Uh, but this restriction actually just comes from the definition of the inverse hyperbolic cosine. So this isn't really a calculus thing here. Uh, this restriction is just uh, from the definition of this function. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, this is actually pretty much going to be almost identical to the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine. Um, but we are going to go through it again just to be thorough. But I will skip some of the details uh, because they are literally pretty much the same thing as what's in the uh, previous video which was the derivative for hyperbolic si uh, inverse hyperbolic sine. Um, but anyway, so inverse hyperbolic cosine of x is defined to be, or one way of defining it is uh, natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, so notice uh, how similar it is to the uh, definition of the inverse hyperbolic sine. Okay, for the inverse hyperbolic sine, we had uh, the same thing, but this is a plus sign instead of a minus. Um, and also, remember, we have this restriction that x is bigger than or equal to 1. Um, this restriction actually is not going to come up in the calculations, though. Um, but it, we do have to point it out just to be safe, or just to be uh, thorough, I guess. Um, okay, so we're just going to proceed like we did in the previous video, but we are going to skip some of the details. So ddx of inverse cosh of x uh, equals ddx of um, natural log of x plus root x squared minus 1. All right, so if we want to take a derivative of this, uh, we're going to have to use chain rule, okay, just like in the previous video. So uh, chain rule says if you want to do a derivative of the natural log of a thing, then that's going to be 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. So we're going to multiply by ddx of x plus root x squared minus 1. Okay, so chain rule says if you want to do the derivative of the natural log of something, it's going to be 1 over that something times the derivative of that something. Okay, so that's what we have here. So let's go ahead and see what that's going to be. So this equals uh, 1 over x plus root x squared minus 1 um, times times what? Well, we're going to differentiate this term by term. So derivative of the first term, okay, is going to be, uh, the first term is just x, so the derivative of the first term is just 1. So we have times 1, all right, uh, and then plus what? So here, this is kind of the messy part again. So uh, root x squared minus 1, so let's come up here real quick, uh, root x squared minus 1, that's the same thing as x squared minus 1 to the 1 half. So if we want to take a derivative, we're going to use a uh, chain rule and the power rule. So what we want to find is the derivative of this second term here. So ddx of root x squared minus 1 is going to be ddx of this thing right here. Okay, so ddx of x squared minus 1 to the 1 half. Okay, so we'll go through this kind of quickly because it's pretty much just the same thing as in the last video, but now we have a minus 1 instead of a plus 1, but that actually doesn't change anything. Um, so the big guy is raising to the one-half power, right? So that means that uh, the derivative is going to be um, one-half times uh, x squared minus one to the negative one-half, and then multiply by the derivative of the little guy. Okay, so what we have here is a derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy, then multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. So that's the chain rule in action there. So when we simplify, um, the 1 half cancels with the 2, uh, and then this becomes uh, x, okay, x, divided by x squared minus 1 to the 1 half, which is the same thing as saying uh, x over root x squared minus 1. So that's all kind of squished in there, but we'll zoom in. So, uh, oops, uh, x over x squared minus 1 to the 1 half equals x over the square root of x squared minus 1. So again, if you want to see more details on this, um, 
check out the last video, the previous video for the uh, inverse of the hyperbolic sine function. Um, it's pretty much the exact same thing as this, but this minus one is a plus one instead. Um, this minus one here is a plus one instead, but it doesn't really change anything as far as this calculation goes. So uh, here's our result here, x over root x squared minus one. So that's the derivative of this second term here. So that's what's gonna go over here. Okay, plus x over root x squared minus one. And now all the same stuff is going to happen uh, as in the last video. Okay, so we're going to write this uh, like this. Okay, we're gonna say one plus x over root x squared minus one uh, divided by x plus root x squared minus one. All right, and again, just like before, now we have a complex fraction, right? Here's a, a fraction inside of another fraction. So you might be tempted to get a common denominator on the top or simplify somehow to uh, get rid of the complex fraction. And that's okay, you can do that, but it's going to make, uh, make the problem a little more difficult later on. So what we should do instead uh, is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the bottom, which is x minus root x squared minus one. Okay, so again, it's just like in the last video, but now instead of, uh, instead of the plus one, we have the minus one here. That's the only difference, really. All right, so now we're just going to expand it all. In other words, we're gonna foil on the top and the bottom. So let's move, let's work our way back up, because we're running out of room down here. So if we foil, let's zoom out also. Uh, if we foil on the top, what happens? Foil on the top, we have x. Uh, first gives us x. Outer is minus root x squared minus one. Okay, minus root x squared minus one. Inner is plus x over root x squared minus one uh, times x. Okay, so inner gives us plus x squared over root x squared minus one. Last is x over root x squared minus one times negative root x squared minus one. So just like in the last video, we have a minus sign here and then this root x squared minus one canceled with this root x squared minus one and all we're really left with is just an x. So I guess uh, that won't take too long to write that out, so we'll just do that. Okay, so the last expansion gives us this, so we have that canceling with that, which is great. Okay, so that's that. Um, now what? Now we foil on the bottom. So if we foil on the bottom, that's a little bit better. Uh, first gives us x squared. Outer is minus x root x squared minus one. Inner is plus x root x squared minus one. So outer and inner cancel, so let's not write those. Uh, so then the last is gonna be minus, okay, positive times negative gives us minus sign, uh, root x squared minus one squared, which is uh, root x squared minus one squared. Remember, that's just x squared minus one, okay? So uh, we have minus x squared minus one, and remember, we do need the parentheses around that because it's a minus that, okay, minus that, like that, from this minus sign here. Okay, so uh, we've got that. Um, now let's go ahead and simplify everything. So we'll come back down. Uh, so if we simplify on the top, what's gonna happen? Uh, x, blah, 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 minus this x over here. Okay, so this is just an x left over. So x minus this x, they cancel, that's great. Um, what do we have left? Minus root x squared minus one plus x squared over root x squared minus one. Okay, that's what we've got there. Uh, what happens on the bottom? On the bottom we have x squared minus x squared plus one. Okay, so that's good. Uh, x squared minus x squared, those cancel. That is wonderful. And all we have left is a plus one. So basically we're dividing this by a positive one. And if you divide by a positive one, uh, that's the same thing as doing nothing, right? So that's just uh, nothing now. So dividing by a one is just like doing nothing. So this is really equal to negative uh, root x squared minus one plus x squared over root x squared minus one. Okay, so that's really what that is. Uh, now, just like in the last video, we want to get a common denominator, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so this negative root x squared minus one, that's the same thing as just saying that divided by one, right? So if you want to get a common denominator, um, we're kind of running out of room over here. 
So let's work our way back up. Uh, if we want to get a common denominator, that's the same thing as saying, let's come back up here. Uh, that's the same thing as saying that equals root x squared minus 1 over root x squared minus 1 okay, times uh, negative root x squared minus 1 plus all that other stuff. Okay, so if we go back down here and look at this, uh, denominator is root x squared minus 1, and this denominator is just a 1, okay, so the common denominator is root x squared minus 1, the least common denominator, I guess we should say. Uh, so we want to multiply this top and the bottom by root x squared minus 1, and that's what we do over here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, expand that. So when we expand that, what do we get? Uh, root x squared minus 1 times negative root x squared minus 1. Okay, we've uh, already done that, really. That's uh, negative quantity x squared minus 1. And then what do we have? We have plus this x squared. And then all of that is divided by root x squared minus 1. Right? That's our common denominator now. Root x squared minus 1. Okay, so what happens now? Uh, now, let's work our way back down. Sorry for jumping all around here, there's just uh, not enough room. Uh, if we distribute the negative sign here, this becomes negative x squared plus 1, and then plus this x squared, all divided by root x squared minus 1. But then the negative x squared and the positive x squared, those cancel, right? So minus x squared, blah, 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 plus x squared. So they cancel, and we're just left with the positive 1 on top. So this uh, equals come over here. So this just uh, equals 1 divided by root x squared minus 1. And that's uh, the result we were looking for. Right? 1 over root x squared minus 1. And uh, that's the proof that the uh, derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosine is equal to 1 over root x squared minus 1. And again, we have this restriction here, but that's uh, not a calculus thing. That just comes from the definition of the uh, inverse hyperbolic cosine. So that's kind of like a pre-calculus uh, pre or a trig thing.